Hi, my name is Rick and welcome to Rick's 1 3 5th Scale Models. Today I'm going to be reviewing a new kit I was excited to get and that's Hobby Boss's Berg Pander 3. Now, this is the 3 version and it's a fairly accurate depiction of that. There's been a lot of conversations I've seen about people complaining about different issues. Most of those being that they wanted the 3A, either 0 or 1, those variants. This is the initial version that the German military got when it first came out. Um, they have modified them. There are lots of things that have been changed on it. And they do have the 3A1, which is substantially different. It's got different side skirts and a lot of armor added on. But they only have, as the last I heard, seven of those vehicles. This, on the other hand, is the initial prototype and then one that went into production and actually issued out. Now, one of the things I will say up front when you look at this is there's a rear view camera here. That's not in this kit. That's actually going to be the 3A0 version, which had the camera system and some other modifications done to it. But um, that's that. And then there's some other things here. There's a, a connection point up here on the boom that's not in the kit. Um, but like I said, let's drive into the kit and talk about it. Now, one of the things I will say is for doing my review, um, all the information I've got, um, because sadly I can't be around one of these vehicles, I had to do a lot of internet searching. I also went to Tankograd and got these two books. Um, this one here actually covers a lot of their different uh, tank recovery vehicles, um, but it has the three version in here, um, where this book is obviously the 3A1. It covers a little bit of the 3A zero but it's mainly about the 3a1 but it's very good information to look at to get pictures reviews and and see different components it'll help me look at the kit and see how accurate it is so let's dive into the review look at the parts and see what we have so looking inside you're going to have a lot of different sprue sheets and then instruction sheets one of the things i like that hobby boss does is you have this colored paint scheme and they're good because they actually show both sides the roof and the front and rear which makes it real nice plus your little color code down here for your uh, codes on which paints to use in different products and their paint colors you've got two sides depending on which uh, version of decals you're going to put on it uh, that's really nice sheet um, you'll also have their little advertisement sheet they usually give, which gives this information here. Uh, most of that's covered in the instructions. And then um, you've got, like I said, different products coming out soon. It's always nice to see. Okay, so going into the instruction sheet, you're going to have your basic information here, your codes, things like that in the different languages like all models do. And you're going to have a... Uh, sprue sheet indicator here of uh, well, all the different sprue sheets you have then you start building the actual vehicle now they've got your uh, assembly process here all this looks fine uh, the first thing that's going to jump out here are these three supplemental pieces that are not on any version of the Berg Panzer that I can find I've looked at multiple pictures of the uh, three initial version the 3A0 and the 3A1, 3A1A1, um, none of them have this. I, I've seen pictures of the bottoms, they're all smooth bottom. So that's wrong. That's something you're going to have to correct in the build and remove. You go through the process installing the uh, axles, uh, then you have your road wheels, your drive sprocket, your return sprocket, and then you start building the actual uh, blade in the front. Uh, blade is fairly accurate. Uh, one of the things that's going to jump out right in the beginning is in this picture you have these things sticking out. In this picture it's not. And I can't find these parts in the model. So think about that for a second. Uh, the only model, the only version of this that would have that would be the 3A1. But this is a 3A. I'm sorry, this is a 3, not the 3A series at all. So that's an interesting picture. I'm not sure uh, where that's going, but I have hopes. Um, going through, assembling the tracks. Then what's neat about this kit is they have not all the interior, but a lot of the interior, so you could have the hatches open and see things inside. Fairly nice looking at the actual pictures. It's pretty accurate, not 100%, but close enough for what you're going to actually be able to see. 
and going through that assembly process. The uh, convoy placard here is nice because they actually have the PE sheets that uh, make it uh, have a 3D dimension, not just a cast one, which is, isn't as nice looking. And then your uh, hooks on the back, things like that. Going through all the different components. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is this panel comes off um, in the assembly process. It might be possible, although I'm not 100% sure, to not secure it and glue it so you can actually open it and see inside. Um, I'm, once I get to the assembly stage, I'll be able to uh, verify that one way or the other. Um, going through, like I said, here's all the interior parts. Lots of details in there, lots of things to paint, uh, things to work through. And then going through the exterior, all the equipment that gets mounted on. Most of this equipment is fairly accurate looking, but there are some challenges. Uh, once I actually show the uh, parts, I'll uh, talk about those in detail. Um, everything looks like it's placed correctly in the 3 version, mind you. This is not the 3A0, so there's no cameras or anything. Um, continuing on, pretty straightforward. Uh, there is a couple of errors in the instruction parts, um, which are back here. There's a D55 here part. That's actually B55. It's an error because you've already used that D55 part. So that's something to be aware of in the build process. Going through. Very straightforward, some nice P work back here, a little bit of challenge. It looks like it'll be amazing detail once it's built. Uh, your tow lines you mount up, different uh, components, spare road wheels, all that. And going through, continuing on, adding your crane mechanism. Finishing up now, I said it already, but one of the things that's missing here is you, you loop this all around and make it in here and, and assemble it. But there's actually the line technically goes back here to a winch mechanism, but also it attaches right up here, right about where this pin device is, right in here. There's a device. They don't cover it. It's not in there, um, so it's something you're going to have to address. Uh, in that, it's a small round with a. Uh, like a, almost like a pulley device. Um, I'll uh, try and find a picture and post it with this review. And then you've got your schematic in the back. So here I'm going to show the first thing is the PE sheet. Now there's two PE sheets. Here's the first one. One thing to notice is it says up right here BUFF-3 Buffalo 3. And that's on this PE sheet. This PE sheet on the other hand has a lot more detail but also, if you look right there, that says BUFF-3 slash 3A1. Now, if you remember in the pictures of the, the build, you had the added little parts to the blade. That's the 3A1. Here, and here's a PE sheet that says 3A1. I have no information one way or the other, but maybe Hobby Boss is going to come out with that. I can only hope. But that was interesting uh, little piece of information. Going through the PE sheets, uh, this one has the blade, parts of the rear end, and different components of the um, blade supports. Now, one of the things that you're going to see missing is right here on both sides, there's going to be a hook device. Well, that's smooth on this, so you're going to have to add that in the actual build process but the details are real clean, the casting is nice, it looks like a good quality, it's not too thick, not too thin, uh, real good job there. This is going to be the uh, another PE sheet that has your side skirts and some of the other parts. Um, well, first thing I would point out is the uh, bolts on the top here of the side skirts seem a little thick, uh, not horrible but a little on the thick side, and the anti-skid plate here for the box on the back of the vehicle. Uh, this is a little on the thin side. I don't know if they were trying to simulate it being worn or if it's just a bad casting. Um, every picture I've seen shows it the same. Uh, it's not real crisp, not real detailed where these are, so I, 
I have to assume it's an intentional part on their part to make it so worn looking. Um, but I think they could have done a better job there on the casting quality. It would just make a nice finished result look a lot nicer. Another point is the uh, engine block uh, for the power plant holder here. These parts are too thin. They're too narrow together. Um, I took a uh, perfect scale resin motor and it's too tight there. And my friend has the Ryefield motor built and he tested it and it's also too narrow. It's, it's about uh, probably a centimeter almost too close together. So that's an issue to have to deal with. So looking at this spruce sheet, uh, more detail, this is mainly the interior and the hatches. These all look real nice. They're, they're thin, they're accurate looking. A um, little bit of the little pieces to nip off there, not too bad. Of course, they always put them right on the hinge point. So a little bit of a challenge cleaning that up, but they uh, didn't actually drive it all the way into the inner side. So this will clean up a lot nicer than some other kits I've seen. Uh, you've got your steering wheel for the driver, some different parts there. Lots of nice interior detail. Uh, no seat belts or anything, so that's something you could add in along with some of the wiring, but overall good quality. Looking at the boom device and some of the other parts here, once again, really nice detail on the uh, non-skid here for the crane mechanism. Here's your recovery uh, for the engine block your piston, um, some of the other parts, the boom, the hook, things like that, uh, all look real nice. No real issues there. Um, that uh, mounting point I was talking about sits right about in this area here, and uh, that's where you would want to bring up some your other end of the cable to make a more accurate looking cable hanging versus it just looping around the two, uh, these two devices here, which or give it its strength. You've got one there and one there. Now you're going to have two of these spruce sheets. Um, you're going to have your uh, ice cleats, uh, your spare road wheels, your smoke launchers uh, for the white phosphorus. Uh, here's another part that is completely wrong and that would be the tow line connections. These are not what Germany uses. Um, I don't know of any country that uses style like this. They almost look like they're World War II era. Uh, Hobby Boss did a great job even doing slide molding for the casting of them, but they are completely wrong. So that's something you definitely have to correct if you want to make it look nice. Um, but the detail on everything else is really nice. Uh, a lot of times the white phosphorus smoke launchers are uh, really bad looking. These look decent. Uh, not not too much work there. You're going to have two of this spruce sheet. This is your recovery items and uh, jack mechanisms and then your shovel and some other stuff. Um, decent looking quality. Like I said, no issues. Uh, real satisfied with their uh, product they've produced here. Here's going to be your road wheels. You have two of these spruce sheet and your drive sprocket and your returns uh, road wheel. Uh, the only thing that's missing here really is there's no writing on the inside of the metal here. There's always a, uh, a brand name and product identifier there. These don't have that. It would have been nice, but uh, not a major mistake on that. The parts don't look too bad. Um, the angle looks a little odd here on the inside to me. Um, I have to compare it to another one, but uh, just one thing to look at. You're going to have two of this. This is uh, your axle parts and then your uh, shock absorber cushions and then your drive sprocket uh, shaft that goes there. So these look real nice there. A lot of times these have a lot of flashing in that. There's nothing here at all to worry about. Here's the lower hull. Um, you've got your uh, setup for your crane. There's no divots here to have to fill in. A lot of times from the casting it works real good. The side looks accurate, nice quality here. Uh, nothing really to worry about other than these three things are not on it. Um, when you correct this, you want to be careful not to mess up your bolt points here to, for your engine mount. Um, but you're going to have to end up putting like a piece of styrene here, uh, filling this in. What I would do is fill these in on the inside, put a piece of styrene over that, glue it down, let it dry overnight, and then sand these down would be the easiest way to fix it, but however you want to go about it. Either way, if you want to make it look right, that's got to go. Here's going to be your uh, top part. 
overall looks nice. Um, you know, they could have done some different things here. Put a little piece of uh, metal there would make it look real sharp, but it's not horrible. Uh, you can wrap the uh, piece around here. Some of the kits do for the air vents, um, but uh, you know, it's not too bad. And you know, if you wanted to take and remove the handles here and uh, put wire ones on that, make it look real good too. Um, one of the things that is noticeable is there's a couple mounting points. Here's one, for example, right here. There's actually a plate underneath there that the part sits on. Um, this is smooth. It's not smooth in the real vehicle, so that's something to have to look at. When, when I do the build, I'm going to address all those key points. Here's three more parts. This is going to be your uh, clear sheet. Real good, nice, clear parts there. Real good casting. Uh, not a lot of difficulty cleaning it up. Uh, we'll make a real nice result. You've got your cable here for your tow line and for the uh, crane mechanism. And then you've got this sheet which is for your spare parts that go on the vehicle. Now what's interesting is they've got some great casting here. Unfortunately they didn't make tracks because here's everything to do your tracks and versus having the solid rubber band tracks which this kit has. Here's the actual tracks, uh, real good casting, but they are the rubber band type. They do have all the gaps inside and uh, no extra flashing. Sometimes a lot of these have that on or uh, divots, none of that. These are for the road wheels the, uh, so they can take them on and off. That's always a nice feature in the building process and, and painting. Here's your decals, uh, real good quality casting, everything's real legible. You've got your warning placards, different markers that go on different points. Uh, the scales look all correct on this. You've got uh, two different license plate versions you can use here for this kit. And then the uh, military uh, insignia looks like the correct size. Sometimes Hoppy Boss makes them uh, the wrong scale, but these look correct. So that's the kit. Um, like I said, overall, it's a nice kit. Does need some modifications and uh, tweaking, but nothing that isn't really over the top difficult. Um, any questions, comments, please reach out to me. Anybody who's been around the vehicle and noticed something I missed, please let me know. I I'd love to hear that. I'm going to be building this kit and showing that progress. And when I do that, I do want to have um, as much information as I can to build it as accurately as possible. I did also buy a uh, resin a supplement kit that I haven't received yet. It's in the mail and once I do the build I'm gonna cover those parts in that process. So like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, comments always welcome. If you don't like something please tell me. That, that makes me a better uh, reviewer and YouTuber. Uh, more videos coming. I've got a lot of other models I picked up. Uh, I've got a lot of catching up to do as I'm behind on pushing videos out. But here's the first in mini. Everyone take care. See you soon and happy modeling. Bye-bye.